Hi, Michael here, and in this video journal on the next part two, I'll continue working on the next that I've been working on for my three-piece walnut build and the rosewood build. So keep watching. Well, next I'm going to cut the truss rod slot in the neck, and I use a double action truss rod like this one, and I put a cover over it, just a little thin veneer, and when it gets cut, it put it to the slot. So I've made a little block of wood that will uh, give me the depth that I need to get to with my truss rod and the little cover piece on it, which is about 10 millimeters. I have bottomed out my router bit on the work surface, and then I put my little uh, block there that gives me the, the depth under my depth gauge and set that and ready to go. Well, the next step is to start working on the peg head. Now that I've got it down to its proper dimensions, thickness-wise, to 9 sixteenths of an inch, I need to mark out where I can cut out my peg head shape. But before I do that, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and drill through my machine head holes with a 1 16th of an inch drill bit. Okay, holes drilled. The next thing I need to do is go ahead and cut my peg head shape out, trim it out. And to do that, it's going to be easier if I do it upside down and run it through the bandsaw. But in order to do that, I need to make sure I've got the template on the back side, the same as on the front. And I have a little template here that is just made out of flexible plastic. And the holes line up with the holes I've just drilled. So I'm just going to turn it over and just use some little toothpicks as positioning guides. And then I'll take my red pencil and mark outside. Now when I trim this out on the bandsaw, I'm gonna trim real proud away from that line Well, the next thing I need to do is position my fingerboard and mark an outside line on it as well. So I'm just going to use the actual fingerboard that's going to go on this build, center it up there with my center lines on the top, and down here at the bottom. And then I'm going to use a small washer and just draw an outsized line. Okay, now I can take this over the bandsaw and bandsaw proud of this red line for my peg head. Well, I'm ready to start cutting out my peg head shape, but the first thing I want to do is make a couple of little relief cuts right here uh, on the neck where it meets the peg head at the nut.
Well, the next step is setting the neck to body angle and to do that I need to measure the angle that I have here that's created from the top to the sides and I'll measure that here with the shim at the saddle location. Now the saddle is located 11 and 13 30 seconds from the top of the body or the 14th fret and I've placed a mark right there. I have a four millimeter shim that I'm going to place right there at that mark and then with this long sliding bevel that I've created to span that distance, I'm going to place it on here and then find what that angle is. Now it's important that the top of my guitar body is perfectly flat right in this location and also perfectly flat right through here. So I've got my angle measured, and just out of curiosity's sake, let's see what that angle is. 91.7. Okay. I'm going to transfer that angle to my neck blank, where my 14th fret location has been marked around the heel there. Now I can take this angle and measure it here, and then just go ahead and mark that line. Now my tendon is only seven eighths of an inch. I've, and I've cut this a little proud, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark, mark my seven eighths of an inch line. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark that angle right there at the end of my tendon, because I need that angle, the same angle at the end of my tendon. The necks are joined to my bodies with a barrel bolt and a, and a barrel nut and then a, a fastener like this. And the barrel nuts, the barrel nuts themselves are 10 millimeters in diameter. I've created a little jig that I use on all of my guitars so that I can locate these holes accurately each time. And so I just have a little rule here got a groove in it and I'm just going to slide this over till I just touch the edge of that line I just drew and mark it. And I'm going to slide it over until I hit the angled line which is just a little bit further for this bottom barrel bolt and mark that location. The next step is just to take this over the drill press and drill these holes out. I have a 15 32nd of an inch brad point bit chucked up into my drill press and that's the size that's going to match up with the 10 millimeter or a 9.95 millimeter barrel bolts. And just need to go ahead and drill those on down in there. I'll put a little bit of paraffin on this bit, kind of help it drill through all this. And here we go. throw of the, the drill press is not quite enough to get the depth that I need, so I have to do this and then raise that just a little bit. Okay, I have my barrel nut holes drilled through the tenon. The next thing I need to do is to go ahead and trim my neck blank down to close to the fingerboard width. I have drawn a red line on here which is actually oversized by 
a little less than a quarter of an inch on either side. And I've got a little guide block that's just going to help me guide it through my bandsaw here. And I'm just going to go ahead and trim down both of my neck planks with this. Next I want to taper my heel just a little bit. It's a little too wide for me before I start working on cutting out the mortise and tenon joints. I'm just going to reverse my jig and just do the other side. Well, it's time to fine tune the peghead shape. I've already done the one that's going to be for the rosewood build. And I fine tuned the outline and the profile. And really this part of the neck is, is, is a finished product. I have a template that is made that is the same shape as my peg head with the appropriate neck width here at the, at the nut. And I'm going to screw it with some spacers to my peg head using some very small screws. Okay, with my template mounted, I can now take this over to my drill press. Well, with my guide template mounted to my peg head, I'm over in my drill press where I have these little robo sanders, which are sanding drums that have a bearing on the bottom to follow your work piece. Okay, I've gotten this peg head trimmed down to its final shape. I'm just going to do a really quick check to make sure I'm exactly where I need to be before I take my template off. Well, it's time to do the last thing to the peg head, which is to go ahead and drill the machine head holes through the peg head. And I've got a little jig set up here with some weight to it so that I can clamp my neck into it and keep it secure while I'm doing that. Okay, so here's the uh, machine head holes drilled in the peg head on the neck. It's actually for the rosewood build. And so this peg head really now is finished. So the neck now is ready for the next step, which will be cutting the mortise and tenon joints and finishing on, on everything else. Well, this will conclude the video journal on the next part too. I've gotten my neck back down to where I've got it ready for the next step, which will be uh, working on the mortise and tenon joints. If you like my content, you know what to do. And if you'd like to support the channel, there is a link down below where you can do that. Thank you all so much for watching.